Hello, my name is Frank Rehm, and I'm here to talk about vaccines, uh, why they're important, how you study them. All these matters have been brought very much to our attention by the COVID challenge and the best way to get vaccines to help us in our fight against COVID. So I'll start with a little bit of perspective, which is that as recently as uh, 1850, the average life expectancy of an American was only 36 years. And since then, the contributions to public health, and, and by the way, by public health, I'm talking about your health, have come from clean water, surgery, antibiotics, and vaccines, all about equally contributing to the general healthiness of us all. So for vaccines, it's important to understand that our immune systems have the ability to learn to fight germs. The first time we get a, a, a measles case, for instance, our bodies learn how to fight measles, and that ability stays with us for the rest of our lives. So the, the, it basically goes to sleep waiting for another measles attack and, and responds much more quickly than it was able to respond the first time we got measles. So that kind of immunity is very important to us. And you can produce that kind of immunity by getting the disease, or you can produce that kind of immunity for many diseases by getting vaccinated. And some of these vaccines have been much more successful than others. Many of us have never seen a case of tetanus or measles or whooping cough or pertussis or polio, all because these vaccines have been extremely good at preventing those diseases. Sometimes they're not as good, but still help, like influenza, for instance. So we don't know where COVID is going to wind up on this spectrum. That's why we have to study it. So I'll just start a bit about the process of studying vaccines and the way the, the recommendations are formulated. We have a committee, the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, that's constituted by the federal government that makes recommendations about vaccines. This group is about as conservative as any group we have that makes recommendations about anything. They basically never recommend anything without very strong data backing up that recommendation. And uh, the way they start, or the way we start studying vaccines actually starts really in, in the computer. They do modeling in the computer for what might work. And then they do animal studies to make sure it's safe and make sure some immune response is, is created. And then you first study things that we call it's a phase one study in a very small number of people uh, to make sure that it's safe. And then the phase two studies come after that, which typically get more data on safety, but also help us decide what the right dose is and what the right formulation is. Vaccines can be formulated with adjuvants, things that help them produce immunity, or they can just be just the straight uh, 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 antigen itself. And after that, after you get a, right, a good idea about the right dose, then you do the very large phase three trials where you're really looking at the ability to prevent the disease, not just the ability to produce uh, uh, antibodies as measured in the test tube or cell mediated immunity as we, as we measure uh, in a good contribution from our federal government to try to speed that up. We are doing faster. We are doing things faster than we've done before. Partly we're doing things in parallel we're doing the, 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 the phase one and the phase two trials almost at the same time. And we've actually started the phase three trials for a number of vaccines uh, uh, before we even have a, a long phase two data as we'd like. We'd like to know that it's safe for uh, six months, but we're actually doing it based on the first month's worth of data. That's not what I'm, I'm most comfortable with, but COVID is such a big challenge, it's terribly important. To, uh, to, to get started on this and to do it fast. Uh, we have in the US by, by January, we'll have five very large trials of different uh, approaches to this, quite remarkably different. And what I think people need to recognize there is it's not just whether it works or not that we need to understand. We need to understand uh, whether it, how long it lasts. We need to understand how it functions in different subpopulations children, pregnant women, people with disabilities, uh, uh, people in different racial, uh, racial and ethnic groups. Uh, and, and you need to study each one of those groups separately. You also need to understand that is it just going to prevent disease or is it going to prevent severe disease? Most of these trials actually, the, the biggest endpoint they're measuring, the most important endpoint they're measuring is severe or moderate disease, not all disease, because it's, it, it, it's, it's logical that, that uh, 
if it prevents severe and moderate disease, that's probably good enough, and that's what we should focus on. We also need to understand the people who do get sick with it, do we reduce the transmission rate from them? And that's baked into these protocols. Do we reduce the severity of it? Uh, so all these issues need to be determined and actually require a relatively long time to get at. And I think with that in, in mind, I'll, I'll just stop. I know that we have a, a, a potential to ask questions. And uh, thank you very much for your attention.